Hello everyone. Till now you have listened to the introduction part of polymers, which covered aspects like what is a monomer, polymers, degree of polymerization, and the preparation properties and uses of PVC, bakelite, Kevlar. and what are the methods of the preparation of these polymers now let's move on to the important topic of polymers that is elastomers now elastomers they are nothing but they are rubbers like it's a rubber it's also called as rubber it's defined as a long chain polymer which under stress undergoes elongation by several times so what i want you to understand is actually it's in the coiled state when you don't apply any force and when you don't when there is no stress on it it's in the coiled state and when you apply some force or when you stretch it these elastomers can be stretched to 4 to 10 times its original length in fact they are high polymers which have elastic properties in excess of 300% so when you leave off the pressure when you release the pressure it comes back to its original shape it again goes back to the coiled state now let's see the different uh, types of rubbers the first kind of rubber that we have is styrene rubber now styrene rubber is nothing but it also is called as a buna s rubber or this is styrene butadiene rubber so let's see the preparation of styrene rubber this is produced by the copolymerization now what is copolymerization you have already studied in the initial classes what is a copolymerization copolymerization is nothing but when two different monomers combine it is called as a copolymer and when you are combining the two different monomers that means we are taking here butadiene and styrene both of them are different monomers they are com uh, combining in the ratio of 75% of butadiene and styrene in the ratio of that is 75% of butadiene and 25% of styrene when it combines you are getting styrene butadiene rubber now let's quickly see what are the properties of it it possesses high abrasion resistance now as you all know that what is abrasion it is a resistance from friction as you all know that these rubbers when they are when they are used in for like the transport they are used in the form of tires so when it moves on to the road it has high susceptibility for to it uh, from this um, friction so from friction it possesses high load bearing capacity and resilience so resilience means stretching capacity load bearing capacity so transportation as you all know that you know heavy loads tires have to bear heavy heavy loads so it has to possess and it gets oxidized especially in the presence of traces of ozone so in the atmospheric oxygen in the atmosphere and when it moves out it has every chance of it to get oxidized in the presence of ozone it swells in oils and solvents so as you all know it is much much exposed to the solvents oils heavy temp temperatures all these and it can be vulcanized now this particular point i want you to understand is the natural rubber that you are getting is the raw rubber that you are getting is very very uh, it cannot be used for the Trans, I mean the commercial purpose, like in the transportation, it's very soft, so it's not hard. It cannot sustain high temperatures and have. It cannot bear heavy loads. So what are we are doing is to this raw rubber, we are adding, we are heating in the presence of sulfur wherever we have the double bonds. We are heating the raw rubber in the presence of sulfur, and we are making it hard actually. And then the process of making uh, the raw rubber into the hard and the rubber that we can use it for the commercial purpose is what is called as vulcanization the process is called as vulcanization so this can be vulcanized in the same way as your natural rubber by adding sulfur or sulfur monochloride but it requires less sulfur because more accelerators for vulcanization so you are adding more initiators and accelerators Styrene rubber resembles natural rubber in processing characteristics as well as the quality of the finished products. So let's see where it is used. It can be used in the manufacture of see motor tires. You all know that motor tires. It can be a bike or an auto or it can be a three wheeler or four wheeler. You know how much load it has to take and how much friction it has to bear. 
so it has to be very tough and strong shoe soles definitely it has to bear the friction because when we move on the road it has to bear the friction floor tires gaskets wire and cable insulations it's used for the manufacture of tire tank linings adhesives carpet backings not only for the hard tough and strong but also you can use in all these for the household purposes next rubber we have is butyl rubber it also is made by the copolymerization of isobutene with a small amounts of isoprene now you know this uh, the natural rubber that is the rubber has the monomer unit of rubber is nothing but isoprene isoprene is the unit of rubber please remember this this is a very very important part so when you combine this one is isoprene 2 methyl 13 butadiene when you combine this with isobutene you would be getting poly isobutene co-styrene also called as butyl rubber let's quickly see again the properties of butyl rubber it possesses outstanding low permeability to air and other gases that means it doesn't it's not oxidized easily to air and gases excellent resistance to heat and chemicals of course sulfuric acid nitric acid hcl and other polar solvents it has high resistance to ozone yes definitely when it is going on into the atmosphere air definitely it has to take the resistance from ozone it can be vulcanized but it cannot be hardened much because definitely vulcanization is a process of heating in the presence of sulfur where the sulfur goes and binds with the uh, double bond so where less sun saturation less vulcanization these are the properties of butyl rubber you can use these in conveyor belts you can use it for insulation pipes you can also use for tank linings cables and other materials like sort parts tubes etc next and the most important part like the type of rubber is silicon rubber silicon rubber is nothing but it is it has you can see that silicon and oxygen so alternate silicon and oxygen bonds are present and this is what is a linkage so this is what is a linkage that is present in the silicon uh, rubber silicon rubber it contains silicon oxygen structure in the alternate fashion now how it is prepared you can see that dimethyl silicon dichloride it is bifunctional you can have one chlorine here this one so it's bifunctional now when this process is completed you can have a long chain of polymers continue so this side also it continues so like this you would be getting a, a greater structure of the polymer that is silicon rubber now also it can you can uh, vulcanize vulcanization vulcanized silicon rubbers are obtained by mixing high molecular weight linear dimethyl silicon polymers with fillers so that means these fillers like you know these are the substances fillers are the substances which are added to improve or to increase the strength to increase the task, um, you know to make it more and more strong and hard these also has some curing agents and the peroxide causes the formation of dimethyl bridge cross link between methyl groups of adjacent chains now you can see that why the silicon rubber is very hard and strong and tough because alternate silicon oxygen structures this is one row this is another row now here when there is a loss of water molecule you can get there is a bond that is existing here that results in the cross linked structure it's a three dimensional cross linked structure making it very strong and tough so you can see this is a cross linked structure whenever you have this cross link such kind of structure you can also you have come across the big light which is also another cross linked structure so whenever the structure is a cross linked it becomes hard and strong now let's see the properties they possess exceptional resistance to the prolonged exposure to sunlight this is a very very important part weathering so heavy changes in the weather whenever there is a heavy wind also it is susceptible to it most of the common oils boiling water this is very one more important thing and acids and alkalis alkalis they remain flexible in the temperature range of 90 to 250 degrees centigrade 
and that's the reason you are making it to be used in fighter aircrafts so all of you know that aircrafts need to have very strong and hard and tough tires because whenever there is a landing or the takeoff what happens is it has to be susceptible to the heavy friction high high and lot of friction temperature differences weathers and all those it has to be susceptible so that is the reason why very very high temperatures it decomposes at normal high temperatures it can withstand but above at a very high temperatures it decomposes leaving behind the non conducting silica that is instead of carbon tar so there is no pollution as such you can use silicone rubbers so you can use it in the search lights aircrafts so especially any aircrafts the tires you are making use of the silicone rubber you can see the aircraft tire it looks so strong it is so big and it is very hard and strong so if this tire is not strong then it is not susceptible to the solutions or oxidations or weather conditions so these are also the important uses of uh, the silicone rubber used for washing machines and electric blankets for iron board covers and also yeah this is also artificial heart valves transfusion tubing padding for plastic surgeries so this also and um, one of the most important point that everybody you know the point which comes to our mind when ever we talk about silicone rubber is the knee the boots for making boots at very very low temperatures so that's the reason please remember neil armstrong when uh, he has used he had used these silicone silicone rubber boots when he walked on the moon so you can know that when we go to another part or another planet definitely we need to be uh, you know alert with the condition that is existing over there it can be the temperature it can be you know of, uh, any kind of you know the weather conditions over there that's the reason these silicone rubbers can be used even in the other part of other plant so thank you